Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd be Hi, everybody. It's Agnes, and guess who's back? It's Jordan. I know you guys hey. enjoyed him. Hello, Jordan. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Good. Good to see you again. Really good to good see to you see again. Good to see you too. Good to see you too, Agnes. Yeah, always a pleasure to interview you. I, For those that don't know you, I interviewed you. I read your story. I'm going to put links down below to those because they were exceptionally good. And uh, I yeah. really am interested to talk to you today because I know people really struggle leading up to Valentine's Day. It's either a day of fun or a day of real, I'm not getting, I'm in pain and stuff like that. So yeah. last year it was stories where women were sharing mainly. So this okay. year it's about the men and uh, yes. I'm going to, yeah, just hear your thoughts about what do you think about the whole Valentine's Day thing? What do you think? Well, I think, I mean, you know, besides all the, the cliches that happen around the day and that, you know, of course, it's centered around the concepts of romantic love and idealization and all these things. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's, I think it's wonderful in its essence. I think it's a real, like... An, an idea that makes sense you know what i mean we have a day that's dedicated to the sort of you know the ideals of romantic love that's that is in our lives but um you know it can like you said it can be difficult for a lot of people because if you don't you know if you're someone that doesn't have that love or you know for whatever reason romantic relationships are difficult for you then of course valentine's day can be quite difficult um but then, of course, we do we do celebrate other types of love on Valentine's Day. You know, like I give my mom a Valentine's Day gift every year. So, you know, it, nice. it has, it's, got, it's got a lot of purposes, you know. So <laughs> I, I, I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it, if I, if I do say so myself. Lovely. What a nice thing. I've never thought to do that for, you know, that it's not the person you're with. That's lovely that you do that for your mom. And what... Like, what do you come up with different things every year for her? What do you do with her? Oh, well, I mean, you know, when I was a kid, it was like, you know, of course, like, who else is going to be your Valentine than your mom? You know? Yeah. But, but, you know, as an, as an adult, it's like, uh, I just get her a card and, uh, you know, chocolate or something like that. But usually just a card, especially because she's a little bit further away. I'm in New York, so yep. you know, that makes the, the gift giving a little bit difficult, but I can always pop something in the mail. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So that's yeah. lovely. But I do I do feel like, you know, that's that's something that's cute. It's cute. It is. Yeah. It is. That's sure. really nice. That's well, it's just <laughs> thinking outside what the usual done things are or expected things. What about in relationships, when you've been in relationships, do you being a man do you expect something do you yeah. what what do you find that there's do you feel pressured to get something for your partner if you're in a relationship what what do you think about that yeah for sure for sure i think it's like a you know kind of like in it's an expectation um i yeah i i I try to kind of like come to a healthier place with those kinds of expectations of like yeah. what exactly I want to get. Yeah, but I do. Yeah. I mean, if I'm in a romantic relationship, I do expect to get something on Valentine's day. And yep. uh, I think it's, I think it's, it's normal. It's, you know, it's our society. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, if we had some kind of arrangement with our partners where we don't get each other gifts on Valentine's day, uh, then sure. That would make sense as well. But I think that's something that you can communicate because yeah. for some people it makes them feel awkward. And I, I think, you Ooh. know, for, for men as well, like, yeah, as someone that dates men, you know, that subject can be quite weird because it's like, you know, what do you get him? What yeah. do you do? You know, um, I find for me, the, the sort of nicest thing that I, that I enjoy is actually not a gift at all. It's more so just like spending time together, yep. you know, like cooking dinner together, yep. a really nice meal, wine, that kind of thing. Yeah. I much prefer that than any kind of like chocolates yep. or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, cooking dinner and also, enjoying yeah, your favorite meal. 
Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's a little bit more, and it feels a little bit more mature than the sort of like, like high school, like we send around carnations or like, you know, you, you have like a secret crush or something like that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, it's like, you know, just a little bit, a little bit classier, shall we yeah, say. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So is the cooking dinner thing yeah. something you like to give as that's part of your giving or it's something you like to receive? That's part of my giving. And I think, you know, of course I would love, I'd love to receive that, but it, it depends on the person that I'm with. Yeah. Of course. Um, right, right now my partner does like to cook. So yep. <laughs> that's, that's a plus. <laughs> um, Definite plus. But Definite yeah. Plus. As part of my own giving, I feel like that's, yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's something that I really enjoy to give. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's like part of my love language. You know? Yes. Yes. The love language is yeah. actually it'd be a good time to talk about that. What, what do you find uh, is your main love language and what do you think is your partner's main love language in this, in, in, to do with Valentine's Day? to do with Valentine's Day. I think my, in, usually my love language is centered around, um, well, touch is really important to me, but then also like, um, I'm really big on like nonviolent loving communication, transparent communication. That's kind of like what I bring into my relationships now that I, yep. I would say, you know, a couple of years ago, I didn't, I didn't, you know, and it's a learning curve, of course. Um, we're always, deepening our understanding of what communication really means especially mm. in romantic relationships um but i think my and, and then my my partner um i mean I, I guess we haven't defined it but i would say that his uh what would his love language be i don't know i i guess <laughs> we're very similar yeah That's that which i think works <laughs> so I think yeah we're on the same page mm. <laughs> yeah i think we're on the same page Loving touch, um, yeah, yeah, transparency, that kind of thing. Mm. So healthy, more, more so than more so than words or like hearing it. I think it's working now. Yeah, we're back. Yeah, so more so than hearing it, Jordan, like verbal touch is more important. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think so. That's, that's more than verbal. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Because it's yeah. just reassuring for me. You know what I mean? The, the verbal, of course, you know, verbal is important yep. as well. But I think like the reassurance through touch and yep. understanding and comfort, you know, yeah. reassures the sense of intimacy that for me that I need, you know? Yep. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's lovely. It's so... You know, there's so much stuff around Valentine's Day and, and so much either high expectations or just believing you're never going to get anything. Like it's just this whole spectrum of stuff and it's all in here, you know, what it we really do. Is. It can lead us down so many bad yeah <laughs> and not good ones usually. <laughs> not good ones. Not good and ones. I, the, the not having is really is is really a you know a big yeah. part of that because you think oh well you know part of you has this idea that like well since society dictates that everybody's in a relationship and if you're yeah. of a certain age and you know all of your friends are partnered up and you're not yeah uh, you can look around and say well everybody has all these things that I don't have yeah um you know and then it makes you really hate the holiday even more because you're like well this is just a crossroads proving the point that i'm not a not good enough or b yeah don't have enough. yeah um and when you go shopping yeah. like you go out just to even buy food it's like everything's bombarding you and like you say it makes it does make a lot of people feel like i'm not good enough i'm not good enough it's true yeah, yeah absolutely i mean yeah. that's that's like at the core of all of it, you know? And then yep. I think also like societally, even the displays of these kinds of things are so ostentatious because, you know, maybe subconsciously 
people want us to feel that way so that we'll sort of like you know occupy that space of not good enough with yeah. the consumer with yeah. the consumer mentality yeah for sure <laughs> you know? yeah you can kind of see through all the uh the bullshit if you will <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly i think you know. it's a really good day to be doing your affirmations and your meditation and it's a part of it yeah yeah yes, for unplug sure. unplug so from important. the outside and and get back to hang on i am good enough i am loved i am wanted and let's look for evidence of that not be looking for evidence that i'm unloved and unwanted absolutely so, yes yeah. and yes yeah yes. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah 100 <laughs> percent. excellent so you're obviously um in New York, you were, when I last interviewed you, you were in Hawaii. So how is the meaningful, creative stuff going for you? It's it's going really well. Hawaii was a, uh, oh my gosh, you want to talk about Ho'oponopono? Yes, you know, yes. I really did my investigation, you know, okay. my investigative work while I was there. Yep. I, uh, yeah, I had a really, really sort of transformative experience. Um, I think, at the core of it, it was it was um, a time for me, really just for me to yep. to heal and to understand. Uh, you know, going back to what we had talked about before, sort of the patterns of thinking, the entrenched ways of believing. You know, uh, a I'm not good enough, or b yeah. that you know I will never have enough. Those kinds of things. Uh, they all kind of come to the surface in a very strange way in Hawaii. You know, I, I don't know if you've spent time there or, you know, if people have spent time there, but there's something really, uh, yes, healing, but also expansive, but also very, very like lonely. Okay. In Hawaii, but not in a bad way. Yeah. Some, you know, yep. uh, solitary, solitude. Um, you know, I had a very, I had a moment, uh, talking to actually uh, he was this guy that I met he's a massage therapist uh, was connected through the opera theater and he ran a, a massage studio called Ho'opono Massage um, oh. and it was I just talked to him about you know some guy talked to him about what it meant and it's you know the Ho'oponopono prayer is used in so many different ways um, to cleanse oneself of really the internalized feelings of shame or guilt that happen through um, you know, coming across things, toxic things in relationships that we sometimes yep. don't feel we have power over. Um, and we don't really, I mean, it's part of life. Mm. These things, mm. they, they happen. Um, there's no point in behaving as if they don't happen. Um, but, you know, ideally we manage our emotions in a healthy way and uh, own our emotions ourselves. Yep. Um, and Ho'oponopono can be used to um, center yourself around the, really the accessing of your, your deeper, maybe more difficult emotions, especially in relationships, yeah. intimate relationships, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So did he com a, Jordan, did he combine Ho'oponopono with the massage? Yes, it was actually wow. the best massage ever in my life. Wow, so I've never there, heard of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if he's out there, I mean, hey. Hi. <laughs> unreal. Uh, unreal. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I had a, I had quite a spiritual experience. Um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not one that's, I, I wouldn't say that I'm the kind of person that's like, you know, Oh, I'm searching for some kind of transformative experience here, but really it happened in an organic way. I, I went to, I went to Maui for a few days and I went to the top of Haleakala. Yeah. And that, in and of itself, just seeing the world from that vantage point um, put a lot of my trials and tribulations into new perspectives. And, mm. and I had a lot of um, had a lot of work to do there. You know, I mean, it was like a really intense program. Uh, you know, both musically, vocally, all that stuff. Yeah. So I had a yeah, I had a really intense time in Hawaii, and I, but also very relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, lots of time on the beach, and um, yeah, now I'm back in New York. So Fantastic, that sounds life's fun. good. Yeah, and what are you? Um, have you kind of got a few irons in the fire for the creative stuff? Are you working on anything exciting? Yeah, well, I just uh, I just finished um, 
at New York City Opera, we just did a world premiere. Um, we ended, what, a week and a half ago, it closed. Uh, it happened kind of as soon as I got back. So that was kind of like, I just r jumped right back into my normal, yeah, like, you know, hustle <laughs> rehearsal. Yeah, schedule. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, in fact, I had a, I had several auditions this, this past audition season, which is for us the fall and the winter. Yeah. But I remember I, I got off the plane from Hawaii and I had an audition that afternoon. So wow. <laughs> really, I jumped right back into it. And then, um, yeah, so it's been, it's been crazy, but I've got, I've got a lot of stuff coming up, you know? Great. Great, yeah. great, great. Feel good. Have you got any um, links we can put down below in the interview if people want to check out your opera Stuff. Yeah, sure. They can check out my website. I don't. Um, I don't have any new. I have a whole bunch of new recordings that are going to come out. And um, okay, you know things that I make myself. It's oh, very, good. <laughs> it's all, very, all very low budget at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, you can you can put my link my website down there. People okay. Can check out what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Send me. Send me. Send me, send me the links that you want me to put in, and then I'll put them in because I think it's so good when people are creatively doing what they love and, and they're, you know, starting to earn money and they're, st they're free to move around a bit. I, I just think that, wow, it doesn't get better than that. And then you do all this work that we do, the internal work, and then that yes. your, your creative work benefits from it. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. 100%. I don't think I'd be able to do the work if I weren't yep. taking time to, you know, to do the yeah. kinds of things that I need to for my emotional health and for, yeah. my, for my mind. For sure. Know. So on yeah. that note, what, what kind of daily routine have you got for that stuff? Right. So actually in Hawaii, I had a lot of really interesting revelations, um, mainly around, uh, you know, I, I've been listening to a lot of new stuff about psychology, um, the effects of meditation on, um, you know, depression and anxiety and things like that. Things that I've struggled with on and off for yep. Uh, most of my life. And I think a lot of us, you know, we go in cycles of this kind of, this kind of thing. Um, and it leads us all down the path of self healing. So I, um, I came to a realization that like, you know, a lot of my meditative work um, could actually be a lot shorter and a lot more intense. Mm. Um, that that for, for me, that is what is working s super well right now. Yeah. I spend, I spend only, it used to be such that I would spend like, you know, half an hour to an hour meditating every day. Yeah. But now I, I actually have upped my exercise outside, which is really nice. I yep. go running twice a week. Yeah. And I do about three sessions of meditation a week for only about 15 minutes. Okay. But in those... But in the, yeah, but in those sessions, um, I've gotten to a point where I'm doing more, uh, shall I say, re repetitive sort of mantra type meditation one day out of the week. And then I do my very strong visual visualizations or envisaging that kind of yep. thing. Um, and then the, the last day that I meditate during the week, I kind of let my brain do whatever it wants to do. And I let it just like roam freely and I kind of sit with my emotions um as quietly as possible um mm. and I think for me because of just the way I've I don't know come to my self-healing that works really well uh, by no means am uh you know sort of transcended myself <laughs> and, and all the things that, that you know yeah yeah I found something that has has really been working very well and actually it's funny because I don't have um I'm not running into the same problems which is a good thing mm. <laughs> you know? yeah um, this sort of like cyclical nature of of feeling like oh you know a sense of lack or a sense of like I'm I'm always struggling or I'm always, you know, at the bottom of the barrel or I'm always, you know, one leg behind. Yeah. Um, doesn't happen as much. You know, sometimes it's hard because we have old patterns that come up, we, you know, we get triggered in certain situations, um, you know, particularly in intimate relationships. Um, yeah. So yeah. These, yeah, these things happen, but less so now. And I, mm. I feel, I feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> yeah. Feel you really know, good. I wish someone had told me years ago 
if you can just calm your ass down emotionally, yeah, the rest of your life will work, especially your relationships. If someone had just told me that nugget, I didn't actually get that the emotional disturbances in me or what cause all that drama on the outside. I didn't get it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. mean, it, it, no one gives you a guidebook. No one no. hands you to say like, oh, by the way, like maybe you should figure out, you know, mm. <laughs> where your emotions are coming from and like what your traumas are and what yeah. your triggers are, you know, like yeah. those kinds of things. Because, you know, at the end of the day, that's what's the driving, the driving force in your life is going to be, yeah. you know, our brains are programmed to move towards pleasure and move away from pain. So yep. Yep. the more, yeah, the more you can um, really sit with the things that cause you pain and uh, accept them and kind of welcome them in and then process it, put it out, uh, you know, the easier things are going to be. And, and the manifestation aspects just kind of takes care of itself, you know, which yeah. I think... I think uh, goes along with what we had talked about in our last, our last video together, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the getting to the root of the problem, I think a lot of the time is, you know, mm. important for people that are looking to do that, that kind of work, manifestation sure. work. And I just find it's never about the relationship. It's always about some crap you got going on from your childhood that you're replaying and you're Absolutely. attracting. It's if you just go, this is not about this relationship. I got stuff going on. I need to deal with me. This is between me and yeah. me. It's got nothing to do with this. And you pull away because you get so distracted by it's about them. It's about them. And this isn't working between us. And what's going on? And I got to, and you got your ladder up the wrong wall. It's all about right. what you got going on emotionally that is still festering from yeah. God knows when back then Absolutely. sometime. Very long time ago. I mean, it's yeah. the cart before the horse. It's yeah, it really is because yeah. you can't, you know, you can't, uh, you can't undo all that stuff overnight. No, you know? no, but you can consciously say, okay, well, I can dedicate this amount of time to that in yes. my life daily. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, I, I can rewire the way I think about certain things to produce more productive, yeah. helpful thoughts really yeah um, you know that about mm. the, about the pain about the trauma from those early caregiver relationships yeah you know, those are those yep. are the important ones they are um, yeah i did yeah. a lot of listening um especially in hawaii like i said i had a lot of time to myself um to kind of like think about these things uh, i did a lot of listening to a couple different life coaches yeah um, some, some on youtube Richard Grannon, if people know the Spartan Life Coach, he's really awesome. Great YouTube channel. Okay, he's cool. He's out there. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to link him, he's how great. Do, how, do you um, spell, how do you spell that? Richard Grannon, G-R-A-N-N-O-N. -N -N. Okay, cool. Spartan Life Coach, he's great. Um, yeah. You know, he talks a lot about uh, complex PTSD. Yeah. Uh, the sort of like, you know, the effects of... Uh, the narcissistic personality in relationships. Okay. Great. People that struggle with that kind of uh, karma in their lives. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, you know, a lot of the times the complex PTSD can be at the root of this sort of like repetitive thought processes that we have. Um, and it, he ties a lot of stuff into that sort of like um, Abraham Hicks, the way she talks about being tapped into and didn't turn on yeah. is really just getting to the root of why our mind is, is programmed in certain ways. Um, and we go on repeat. So mm. yeah, I listened to a lot of that and I, I kind of came to a, a newer understanding for me about, you know, effective psychology to choose the right thoughts, choosing good thoughts, choosing yeah. things that are more productive uh, in the long run for you yeah. to really make the best out of your life, mm. you know? And to be so, able to do that, you got to clear some of the old baggage. Otherwise you just yeah. default yeah. all the time back, back, back. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's can be unconscious or subconscious that repetitive yeah. thing, Yeah, you know, and that's yeah. how meditation is a tool to get you in touch with that. Yep. Cause you're not going to be able to hear it if you're always busy. Yeah. Happy. Exactly. And like what you're doing, going running, doing that repetitive where you're in your own zone. Yeah. That's a, that's like 
a meditation in itself because you're you're able to think as you run you're able to think yeah. and you get that sense of freedom i think exercise is so good for getting into those especially exercising outside in nature mm-hmm. rather than in a gym i mean the gym's yeah. fine too but something right. about being amongst the trees and the nature nature and the birds and the animals and being able to really feel that physical freedom yeah and it, i started doing it in hawaii because it was like yeah beautiful outside yeah and now that i'm back in new york it's a, it's, kind of, <laughs> it's a different situation uh, yes. but uh you know you're talking about trees and animals and i'm like um where <laughs> the halal stands down there. <laughs> you know we have them yes uh, our flora and fauna in New York. Yeah, um, but you've got beautiful Central Park. You know, is it, you're too far do. away. You're too far away. I'm, 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 I, I'm a little far from Central Park, but I'm closer to. Um, I actually moved uptown, so I'm closer to um, uh, George Washington Bridge. So I run ah. along water there. You know. Nice. Yeah. Lovely. Which is nice. Yeah. So are you still doing like Ho Pono Pono as part of your weekly thing to do? I, I don't include it all the time. I, you know, I feel like if there's something that is particularly like weighing on me, it's a very useful, uh, yeah. sort of like tantric mantra type yeah. thing to yeah. use, yeah. um, to repeat over and over again. Um, I, de- I particularly listen to your video. <laughs> Which one? Oh, <laughs> as the, a guided. The 40 minute one. <laughs> mm-hmm. As yeah. a guided. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really enjoy that. Mm. So Always enjoy your videos, for sure. Oh, you know, but you know that. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, it's not a problem. Ho <laughs> <laughs> uh, pono pono, I just think is just such a untapped resource. It's just, and people yeah. always say, "Oh, I feel worse when I do it." And go, yeah, that's what happens. Your stuff comes up. <laughs> your stuff comes up. <laughs> it's yeah, to clear you it. To apo- you're, you're apologizing. You know, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You're apologizing for the root of it. So yeah. yes, definitely. But you know, in Hawaii, it's kind of like in the fabric of of living there. You know, Ooh. I mean, it's hard to ex- hard to explain. Could go on for hours about it. <laughs> wow. Oh, I can feel a new desire to go there starting to butt up. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should. <laughs> yeah. You should. Yeah. It's um. Just places call you at different times. They call it's you. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I'm about to head out to the Australian desert and it's, oh, over, really? it's over 100 degrees in your temperature. It's 43 in, in um, oh Celsius and it's 100 and something in Fahrenheit. And um, that place has been calling me for about 15 years. So I'm going there to do some meditation. Wow. To, go to explore the aboriginal you know the, the australia is aboriginal that's it was their land it was there it's theirs so Absolutely. i'm going there to i just i need to go there it's and, and i'm really excited because i'm going on um the 30th that's great be, yeah yeah it'll be really good so some well, places call you they call yes. you yeah it's true it's yeah true. i've had a I mean, I, I certainly was, I mean, I, I took the job in Hawaii. I certainly was never like called there to, you know, just to go. But when I was there, I was like, well, this is the perfect timing for this. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and I really had a, tra- like I said, transformative experience. I have a weird, uh, you know, soul calling. I've spent time in Scandinavia. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I lived in Denmark for a while, uh, like kind of on and off. And I, my best friend is a Danish girl. So I, I have this weird attachment to Scandinavia. People are yep. like, why? You know, it's dark and cold. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. It's just something about, you know, I know. being in the North, the North country makes me feel, yep. you know, alive. So yeah, it does. You, we've all got our thing and it happens at a different time. For it all does. Us. Just yeah. for, for the viewers that have, don't know where you're from, can you just tell what your origins are for people to know? Right. Yeah. So, well, I'm, uh, so my dad's black, my mom's white. People yep. think I'm Latino, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Surprise. And then, yeah. um, uh, yeah, but I'm from Buffalo, New York originally. Um, we've got a lot of, you know, French influence there. Yep. Uh, 
Yeah. I don't know if you go on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I know. It's funny because I get picked for South American all the time. People come up and yeah, go, you, yeah. hey, Chico. And I'm like, hey, right. Chico. But I'm, I'm not South American. But I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I'm, here in New York, it's funny because people just speak to me in Spanish. Like, yeah. By oh, default. You know? Yeah. And you're kind I'm of. Fine with me. <laughs> I'd love I'm, to. I feel say. honored. Yes. <laughs> I know. I just, I, I just go through. I wish I, I need to learn Spanish so that I can actually play the part a bit better. It's such a beautiful language right? too. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Well, and yes, I, I think I, I think I should run actually. No problem. I, um... That's, that's perfectly enough. Thank you for sharing everything. It's always a pleasure. And uh, I will, Absolutely. do you want to say goodbye to the viewers before we log off? Goodbye, everyone. I love you all. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Take and care of yourselves. It's so important. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay, Jordan, you stay on. We'll say bye in private. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. See you in the next YouTube. Ciao, ciao.